The software you build with Glide transforms how teams work. With the tools Glide gives you in computation, layout, AI, actions, and integrations, you can build solutions that radically change the way that people work, making them more efficient. But with workflows, you can do even more. You can design software that does work for you, automating manual tasks entirely. Workflows takes all of the features you're already using in Glide and allows you to automate them. So let's go through an overview of workflows. I'll cover how it relates to other automation tools, workflow triggers, conditions, loops, and how to troubleshoot workflow errors. Most people know about automation tools like Zapier and Make, and you may have even built with these to automate your Glide apps. Now, these are great tools for connecting your app to a wide array of existing services, but when you're building Glide-specific automations, it's much more convenient to have all of your data, layout, and workflows in one platform. Glide workflows are designed for operations on large tables of data. For example, it's possible to loop over all orders, then all items per order, and then finally complete a summary step, all with one triggered workflow in Glide. In contrast, many automation platforms are built or geared more towards processing single events, like connecting tool A to tool B, and then doing one or a few tasks each time that automation is triggered. External automation platforms also add to your workload and maintenance costs. Each time you update your Glide app, you need to consider how these changes affect workflows managed on other platforms. And finally, your workflows are deeply integrated with your data, interface, and all of Glide's features. So you can run AI, make API calls, manipulate numbers and text, all without using any formulas or code. Today, workflows have four different types of triggers, but we're developing more and will continue to add to this list. The triggers currently available are app interaction, schedule, webhook, and email. App interaction workflows are triggered by a user interacting with the app in some way, often by tapping a button in the physical app. These workflows can be simple, comprised of just one action, or you can add a series of steps that perform different actions and computations with different conditional branches. Schedule workflows happen automatically on a schedule that you choose. For example, a scheduled workflow could run every day at 5 p.m., or every week on a Friday, or every month on the first day of the month. Webhook workflows are initiated by a HTTP request, otherwise known as a webhook, from another program outside of Glide. These kind of workflows allow a request to be received from an outside application, like a payroll or invoice processing software that you're using, and then cause something to happen in Glide. And finally, the email trigger is initiated when an email is received by a specific address that you choose. In this way, your app can know when a relevant email comes in and then take action with the information from that email, incorporate it into your app's data, and even reply to the email for you. Now, conditions are not new to Glide, but with workflows, you can create branches and nested conditions to make more complicated logic and get as granular as you need. In software development, loops are sets of instructions that can repeat over your data until all of the parameters or conditions are met. In Glide, these instructions take the form of a loop within a workflow. When you create a loop, you create a set of instructions that will run methodically through every row of your data defined by that loop. When you create nested loops, you create a subset of instructions within a loop that will also run until certain conditions are met. When a workflow with loops is triggered by an email, webhook, or schedule, it runs automatically in the back end of Glide. Loops process your data row by row as part of that workflow, regardless of whether a user is actively using your Glide app. This ensures that the automation continues seamlessly in the background. We've also built multiple ways to troubleshoot workflows when they don't behave as expected. In the workflow editor, you can review a 90-day run history for each workflow. This will outline when the workflow was triggered, which actions or loops it ran, how many conditional branches matched, and when the loop ended. Clicking on the brackets next to any entry in a log will show what data was changed, and if any errors occurred, the run will appear in red. Glide will also proactively send you an email if there are any errors that prevent a workflow from running successfully. In this email, we'll link you directly to the workflow that had the error so you can review the details and troubleshoot from there. Lastly, when you create a workflow, Glide will automatically add two tables to your app, the workflow run log and the workflow step log. The workflow run log shows details about each workflow that is triggered, including how it was triggered, when, and whether it was successful. The workflow step log shows details about each step, 
in the workflow, including which data was sent, when the step started and finished, and an error message for the step if it failed. So this is just the beginning of our workflows development. To learn more about each of the trigger types and what you can do with workflows, you can head to glideapps.com slash learn. Thank you.